the United States flag, USS Eben Atoll's flag. This flag was recovered from the wreck of the USS Eben Atoll, a U.S. Navy missile cruiser sunk off the coast of Alaska in 2066 with all hands lost. The cutting... isn't it souls? That it said, usually? Anyway, the cutting edge vessel's loss was due to a nuclear torpedo strike from the U.S. Navy submarine, the USS Interference, during the Anchorage campaign. The submarine mistook the cruiser for an enemy vessel during radio silence and sunk it before obtaining visual confirmation. This ranks as one of the most tragic disasters in U.S. naval history since World War II. Mm -hmm. Overlooked Inventors. These portraits created by the renowned, I suppose, contemporary artist Lincoln Myers depict some of the more overlooked American inventors. From top to bottom, left to right, Richard G. Drew, Adhesive Tape, 1925, James Ritty, Cash Register, 1879, Carl C. Magee, Parking Meter, 1935, and Mary Anderson, Windshield Wiper, 1903. With a very, very weird, different mechanism from basically how windshield wipers work in modern day cars. Because it was like manual and it was weird and it was very interesting as well. well. Let's see if these are different. They are not different. And they also don't have that 000, zero thing. Or 001 as, as it would be. Halls of today and super mutants. Oh, and more stealth boys. Time to drink some Nuka-Cola, then. Not dirty water. Uh, how do I drop? Right-click? Yes, indeed. And... There's two exhibi exhibits for the Pip-Boy? That's weird. Halls of today. Halls of today, yeah. Did I, did I read Halls of Tomorrow? Because I think I might have. Hmm. Well, moving on then. There's a... Is there a passage there? There's a computer there. I didn't mess with the computer. I don't think. Research... No, I did. I did. It's the... That guy's... It's the computer that went sentient because of the... The virus. <laughs> At least I think that's what it is. It's a really weird thing. This, so, this computer... Uh, although it was referring to itself as the core and whatnot. As, as if there were a, a thing in... Tech welcomes you to our new line of subterranean vaults featuring our patented Triple S technology. Triple S technology. Um, dog meat. You probably should stay here. I know. Vault shelter, sign up. It's difficult to tell. We'll be there. Oh, it's an entrance to a vault. Triple S technology is Vault Tech's convergence of the three most important parts of apocalyptic endurance safety, survivability, and sanitation. That's why it's Triple S. And this is. Are we good? Man. Sleep in quiet knowing that our impenetrable vault doors can withstand a direct hit by an atomic bomb with only a projected 2% failure rate. I thought I had my li uh, flashlight off. But nope. It was just that dark. 2% failure rate is pretty decent. That's, I think that's expected. Okay. Keep out, not part of tour. Uh, what is the penalty for me to, shh, to not keep out? There's nothing in there. Just some, just some machines. More of these posters. Underground, got you down. 
smile. Our Simu Sun lighting mimics the feeling of being outside with only a fraction of the sunburn potential. Those lights? Interesting. Simu Sun. There's blood down here, though. I don't like that. I don't like blood. I wish the world didn't have blood. So it must be the super mutants came down here. Right? Interactive button. Plastic skeleton. Um... The living sections make use of our revolutionary floor suck auto cleaner system for those darned messy kids. Never sweep again. Floor suck. Floor suck. Alrighty. I think we're gonna be safe. Moms will love how our Coolinator 3000 kitchen system makes cooking a breeze. Mmm, I can smell the muffins baking now. Mmm. Ask your husband today to buy it for you. Or don't be. Step into our Entertainatron room and watch the latest holotapes. Or perhaps listen to a symphony. Another Vault Tech innovation. That machine looks really cool, though. In a, you know, 1950s kind of way. Which is cool. Concerns about security? Our Eye on You cameras enable the vault's leader to watch your every move. You'll never be alone again! Uh... I don't think our vault had that. And that's it. That's the tour. I think. Should the unlikely event arise that the planet is laid to waste, you'll feel happy knowing your family will be safe in a vault tech vault. Should the unlikely event arise? Uh, what is the... I was trying to be on the lookout for the numbers downstairs. For the puzzle. We hope you've enjoyed our tour today. If you have any further questions, please take a brochure from our helpful Vault Tech guides. You have brochures? Why didn't I get the brochure when I got in? Oh, there's a West Wing. That is where we're supposed to go, though. Oh, and we need to go. Oh, we need to go. It's, it, there's no up through here. Don't worry. There is an up. I go. Th I go everywhere. I. I. I Nobody stops me. What I what does stop me, however, is this machine. Because there is a back, okay. Yeah, I can't tell. Nine, nineteen, thirty, forty-nine. What? I... Hashtag good luck. Is it a brute force? It can't be a brute force thing. What am I looking at? Let's go with 19. Zero, zero, 001 confirmed. Need three confirmations. I am gonna reload, actually. And, uh... Let that be there. For the moment. There are other computers. Okay, let's try... Let's try that again. See if the other computers show anything. Although I doubt it. So what made me think that it was the 19? For one, uh, for a little bit, I was thinking it might be binary. But obviously it can't be because there's always other numbers. But 
Um, and then that made me think maybe the one moves around or something. And anything that, that fits the mold. Yeah, there's nothing up here. So I'm going to reload. And yeah. Oh, that might be a quest for something else. Or we're going to get the clues elsewhere. We oughta. Right? Well, look at this door. Hey. Hello. Let's go. And let's leave. Or maybe not leave, but go through here. I think it's safe. Ooh! It's, um, Vertibird. The XVB02, quote, Vertibird prototype, unquote. Though the unquote wasn't at the end. This is a skilled model of a prototype military transport vehicle being developed by the U.S. military. The XVB02, quote, Vertibird, unquote, is a VTOL, that stands for Vertical Takeoff and Landing Craft, with a extremely durable armored fuselage and can be armed with a variety of offensive weapons and defensive countermeasures. This is the most advanced aircraft of its kind ever development, uh, developed, and the military hopes to press them into service by 2085. Hmm. That's interesting. That's curious. That means there's not a whole lot of them. And the ones that do exist are prototypes. What does it mean to be a prototype? Well, it means it's not mass-produced. That's most of, more or less what it means. What the hell's that? It's not a... It's not a... In the, on the minimap. Yeah. That's interesting. That they would be prototypes. Far out space facts! Exclamation mark. Fact number one. The planet Jupiter is larger than 1,000 Earths. Fact number two. The outer layer of the sun have what is known as, quote, differential rotation, unquote. The equator of the surface rotates once every 25.4 days, but near the poles it rotates once every 36 days, exclamation mark. A lot of exclamation marks in this thing. A neutron star is completely dense and solid matter. In fact, it weighs a trillion times heavier than lead. That means a piece of a neutron star the size of a pinhead would weigh as much as a large building, exclamation mark. That is weird phrasing, but it gets to the point, yeah. The sun loses almost 4 million tons of mass every second by turning hydrogen gas into energy. That adds up to almost 345 billion tons per day. It is... it is... It's not quite how that works. It didn't turn the hydrogen into energy. And I'm not even getting into the semantics of, oh, it harnesses hydrogen or whatever. No, no, it's not about turning it into energy. It's that, um, it's, it's a nuclear, it's the, it's the fusion, uh, it's the fission, uh, sorry, it's the fusion thing. There's uh, free neutrons flying around and uh, through quantum processes, uh, because th th it's very unlikely. If it, uh, quantum mechanics didn't exist, the sun wouldn't, uh, the stars wouldn't have, wouldn't make light. Basically, the stars wouldn't exist, uh, and it's quantum processes that make the, um, that make the 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 neutrons hit, the, um, a, a nucleus, a hydrogen nucleus, and then it it uh, it blows up. No. It there's some something happens, but it isn't. It's not combustion, basically, is what I mean to say. It doesn't burn. It's a nuclear effect. If we were to send a message to someone on a planet belonging to our closest neighboring solar system, Alpha Centauri, which is almost 4.4 light years away, we wouldn't receive a reply message for 8.8 uh, 8 years. At the very least, because that's because of the, you know, you might not, rep they might never reply. They might be ghosting us. For all we know. There are about 175 billion galaxies in the observable universe, each with as few as 10 million stars up to giants with 1 trillion stars, all orbiting a common center of mass. Exclamation mark. The stars are, not the galaxies. That's important. <laughs> and then over here. 
if all of the particles that make up Saturn's rings were gathered together, they would form a sphere about 120 miles in diameter. That's quite a big ball. Yeah, it's quite a big ball. And then we have space fact number eight. Olympus Mons, a volcano found on Mars, is the largest known volcano in the solar system. It is 370 miles across and uh, rises 15 miles. That's up in the sky. There's uh, th that's three times taller than Mount Everest. Mm -hmm. And it's actually quite a quite a, a, an interesting and important, geologically speaking, uh, an important uh, mountain because of Mars is not a very volcanically active planet, as far as I know. There, there's something going on with uh, with uh, with this thing that makes geologists be like, "Ooh, because of this, we know all this stuff." Because other, you wouldn't expect a mountain of that size in a planet in a planet like Mars. There's some things going on like that because the, on the one side the planet is smaller than the earth so mountains uh tend to be smaller but the the other side is that the gravity is lower so mountains can just do other things and the other thing is that there's not a whole lot of erosion which is uh we got museum information that's the same as before isn't it yeah uh we got a although this might be are we supposed to go all what? It's a number two here. There's something going on. Hmm. Either way, uh, I was talking about Mars. Yeah, erosion, air, uh, wind erosion and stuff is basically what makes mountains uh, smaller. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. What is this? It's the planetarium. I've never been to one. For as long as history has been recorded, man has had an insatiable hunger for knowledge regarding the universe. To understand why man is so interested in this unknown expanse of space around our little world, we must take a journey. Please, sit back, relax, and free yourself from the bonds of our planet as we take off for the stars. Star, planet as we stars. <laughs> For as long as history has been recorded, man what? has had an insatiable hunger for knowledge regarding. Is this gonna do that? It undoes. Undoes. What it was. <laughs> well, it's broken, alright. It's definitely broken. Oh boy. Kind of wanted to see. Fun fact: History has been recorded. That was that's an an interesting one. Fun fact: History is what we record. It's called prehistory, as in it comes before history, uh, for stuff that doesn't have records, as in you know written stuff. So that's uh, it's not incorrect to say for as long as history has been recorded. Naturally, it isn't incorrect. There's weapons in here. Hmm. But, it's also, it's kind of it's kind of interesting, throughout history, and prehistory as well. There's no reason for us to believe that people uh, in prehistoric times, planetarium terminal, oh, we're going to take control. Yeah, there's no reason to believe that people in prehistoric times didn't care about the universe. So, sealed over here, coded. Mm-hmm. Easy indeed. A lot of experience, though, so... Very happy with that. Unlock planetarium exit. Wait, it was locked? Oh, maybe we're gonna... Oh, research leads terminal. Is it the same? It is. I was gonna say maybe we're, um, we're gonna find a password for that. Because what happens if you're really a scrub and can't hack that computer? Oh, it's called a gu gun cabinet. Makes sense. Uh, well, we can't unlock you shutting up, unfortunately. Although there might be a manual control up here. Although I don't think so. Oh, there is. Stop showing progress. Okay. That shut him up. And this is the exit. 
that I assume was locked. We have a door that goes up and a water that comes down. And of course we have the other area. Well, let's go up first. More plastic skeletons. And suitcases. Ooh! It's the Radiation King. Maybe maybe that dude that we found just appropriated the name from the pre-war publicity. We have turret control system. Yes, we are gonna turret control it. Uh, fortified. Countries. Scientist. Scientist it is. Lots of experience again. Reconfigure targeting parameters. We did. Oh, the turret system is disabled. System information. Hmm. Oh. Is it outside? There's more plastic skeletons up here. That might be a real skeleton, in fact. I mean, probably not, because there's papers from before the war. So this is all very well preserved. We have a safe that requires a key, but we have a computer that that opens the safe, most likely. Receptors. Wastelord. Wastelord is a weird name. I don't... It's like the chief of... Ooh. We got it. It's like the chief of... Um... um of the waste disposal thing. Zero, zero. Find info terminals. Security bulletin zero one. Find info terminals. Hmm. All museum security personnel, the International Ordnance Museum, has graciously loaned us some of their prized antique weapons for the firearms exhibition being displayed in the atrium. The exhibition will be placed in August 14th, 2077 until December 31st, 2077. Please adjust your rounds accordingly and have an extra security presence in this area at all times. Uh, how would that be a clue, though? I don't think this is a clue. The zero zero. Oh, no, it was zero one nine. Yeah. I'd like to request that all riot gear and security firearms be moved to the new gun locker in the planetarium research office. The cabinet should remain locked at all times. The key to the cabinet must be carried by the duty shift supervisor and left in the security office safe when shift changes occur and at closing time. From Donald, uh, Donald Cohen, the lead museum curator. And then we have 003. The Museum of Technology annual gala dinner will be held in the atrium on November 1st. 2077, we expect over a hundred attendees, including several local dignitaries and heads of state. Please set up... Head, heads of state? Local heads of state? What? That doesn't make sense. Anyway, please set up security checkpoints and provide visible coverage for this event as per security mandate 199078B in your handbook. Hmm... And that doesn't open. Wait, 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 wait. Are there numbers here? At all. Any number. August is the eighth month. It is 019 on the 001. I don't know. I don't get it. There's filing cabinets in here, but of course they have the same, same old, same old. Okay, well, uh, uh, mm, wait. I was gonna say I'm glad I came over here. No, I just want to check. Yeah, check that that thing is all done. I'm glad I came over here first, because that's a dead end. Small ruined book, and that's the. Mustang thing. What is it called? They call it... A, there's a name. It's a P-51. World War II flight... Or fight medals. The medals in this case were typically awarded to American pilots in World War II. From left to right, top row to bottom. Medal of Honor, Distinguished Service Cross, Silver Star, Distinguished Flying Cross, Navy Cross, Air Medal, Bronze Star, and the Purple Heart. Although, to be fair, the Purple Heart can be... Or is given to anyone who has suffered an injury in in uh, 
while while exer exerting while fighting specifically i don't think it it applies to like injuries at, at base or something like that otherwise it'd be kind of weird on july the 16th 1969 and that would be a week after in real life the virgo 2 lander or lunar lander quote valiant 11 unquote became the very first manned space vehicle to touch down on the moon the valiant 11's crew consisted of captain richard wade captain mark garris and captain michael hagen of the ussa we salute these brave and noble men who took the very first steps on a planetary body other than our own what happened to them though I wonder what happened to them. I wonder if they made it back. 